So we have to get more things and because the animals need better enclosures. So we got a little bit of things in your car. Take a look. Holy uh, shit. What happened? There's two dummies behind you guys. Literally, we're using every single extra piece that I purchased for this so we can put it all together. So all What is going on, Ranch Fam? Welcome back to the channel, you guys. If you guys are new here, my name is Blake. Subscribe to the channel because here at the ranch, we do a lot of different crazy things. Uh, Snooky's right here, just living her best life with me, and Fergie's right there too, the guard dogs of the ranch. But today, if you guys saw the video, the update video when we came back from Hawaii, and then we went to Chicago. So if you guys didn't see the Chicago videos, make sure you guys, Chicago, what am I thinking? Colorado, we went to Colorado. The Colorado videos, make sure you check those videos out. But if you guys saw that update video, we got some new crocodilians that are inside the patio. One caiman and three American alligators that are about two and a half feet. And that enclosure that they're in was the old pool pond that I had. And that pool pond is not their home. So right behind me inside my mother's car, she's really not going to like this because the truck is at the shop. And um, yeah, we're going to get her reaction, what she thinks. This is her car. It's a Lexus. And uh, we got a lot of uh, mulch rocks and all different things here. DIY setup stuff that I know how to build an alligator enclosure for the crocodilians, the alligators that are in the back. We're gonna set the whole thing up. You guys are gonna see the whole process of it. It's gonna be a really fun project for you guys to learn and see. It could be also a DOI for aquatic turtles as well. A quick, cheap turtle pond or alligator pond. Many people can't obviously have crocodilians like I do. I have the ability to have these animals for education, but you can do this for turtles too, so it works both ways. But for today, it's gonna be for alligators. So follow along and give this video a thumbs up and we're gonna set up an alligator cage. But before we do that, we gotta take all this stuff out and I wanna see my mom's reaction. So let's go get her and see what her, what she thinks. I told her we got stuff, but she doesn't know how much stuff we got. So let's go do this real quick. Yeah. Come here, cover your eyes. Actually, my hands are ready. I was gonna cover my hands with your dirty but like, just cover your hands. All right, I'll, all right, well, I'll make sure I don't fall. I got you, relax. Yeah, okay, you got me. I got you, you're good, don't worry. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Uh -huh. uh, look at breathing yeah. hard and yeah. all that stuff. You ready? Mm -hmm. You ready? What'd you do? So the thing is, is also we don't have the truck and the, the ranch never stops. So we mm -hmm. have to get more things and because the animals need better enclosures. So we got a little bit of things in your car. You can look. Holy shit. Why are you cursing on my oh, channel? Sorry. Mm -hmm. All right, we're taking it out. We're taking, it was just a quick second. How did you get poles in there? How, oh, oh my God. God. Good, the That's why I just wanted to hurry up. That's why we said we're going to lunch. I'm going to just take everything out real quick. It's okay. It's hitting my radio. No, it's not. Go check. No, it's hitting the buttons. <laughs> I promise you it's not. Okay, well, let's go. Get it out. All right, you go. Go back inside. Oh, my. Poles? <laughs> Told you going to freak right. out. All right, let's take all this stuff out, lay it to the side, and then um, let's get going and get this enclosure going, you guys, and it's going to be a fun day. Let's do it. All right, so we got everything out of the car and... My dad had it to go to work, but before he went to work, I had him help me out a little bit and have everything pre-cut, ready to go for the video for you guys to see so you don't have to deal with that whole part. So we cut all the landscaping logs. We got a bunch of two by fours that we cut. Everything is pre-cut, like I just said, ready to go. So right here, I was gonna first use these as the post and put this into the ground a little bit and mesh this, staple it together so that'll be the barrier for the crocodilians so they don't come out. But rethought it over a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna use a smaller piece because I'm gonna put this in the ground about six inches just so it doesn't fall over at all. And I'm gonna have about that much hanging off the side of this metal. With that being said, I'm gonna bend that over so there's a lip. So just in case the crocodilians try to climb out of the enclosure, they can't come back backwards and then climb out. So that's gonna be help it just right there and then. But to help it even better, I got this metal sheeting right here that's gonna go around the whole perimeter of the whole bottom of the enclosure. So if they try to climb up, they're gonna slip down. And if they pass that point, then like I just said, they have that L-shaped part and they won't be able to climb out at all so that the crocodilians stay inside of the enclosure because they cannot leave their enclosure for regulation, things of that sort. Yay, and they, and go, whatever, it's ready, set to go. You guys are gonna see the whole process of that. Then, we have all these two by fours cut right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stack these three two by fours together. We have these cut pieces. We're gonna screw them together on the outside part of that of those two by fours. It's gonna be a six by five foot pond, about 
how many inches do you think that is? That's probably around uh, 16 inches or so. We're actually gonna dig into the ground as well. So it's almost gonna be almost two feet of depth of the pond. And if you guys remember, we threw away that old pool pond that is over there. And many people in the comments are like, oh, you should donate it. Oh, you shouldn't just throw away this and that. It's still sitting there. I haven't thrown it away yet because I knew I was gonna use it for another project. And that is gonna be the screening, the barrier, the pond liner for the alligators for them. I know it's a lot of talking right now, but we're gonna put it all together right now. And at the end of this video, these crocodilians are going inside of their brand new enclosure. I'm not too sure exactly the size, but I'm probably gonna make it as much as this mesh is right here. It's four feet tall by 20 feet length of mesh. So we're probably gonna use, I don't know, we'll measure it afterwards. It's gonna be as big as I can make it to make these crocodilians happy. So uh, let's get this thing going. And we got Damien helping me. Dylan's behind the camera, he's gonna be helping too, but uh, we're gonna get this going and we're gonna go figure out where we're gonna put it. Pretty much have the idea, but uh, let's get this going. Put one there, one there. Let's get screwed together there. We got all these cut pieces. So just put a screw in each two by four. So one, one, one. It doesn't have to be that strong because it's not like. It's on each side like this? Yeah. One, 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 three screws, each two by four. Go, here we go. And like I said earlier, you guys, this enclosure could be used for alligators or aquatic species of turtles as well. And I'll show you afterwards why it could be for both ways. We got two sides done. One more, one more to go. So this is six by five foot pond. And again, it is yay deep already, but we're gonna dig it down another two by four into the ground. With that rubber over there, that rubber was a 12 by 12 rubbering so I cut the whole thing out put it in there and then cut out the leftovers that I don't need it's gonna be prime it's gonna be a humongous pond there's gonna be no filter there's gonna be nothing on it but to clean it I'll use a pump that I have a sump pump suck all the water out with the hose in it and it'll just clean it out and cycle without a problem because no fish there's just gonna be um, crocodilians in there with no problem bro this pond is gonna be massive for them then plus the land area they put another three or four more alligators in here without a problem probably add some turtles too because where they came from there was turtles with them already so turtle and alligator pond. I don't know, we got mulch and rocks to do with them too. This is gonna be an amazing, cheap way to make a turtle enclosure or anything. And a lot of this wood was already here at the ranch. Like actually donated to me, so that's perfect. All right, so we pretty much have the frame all put together. We just gotta screw the rest pieces in, but it's gonna be a little heavy. So we're gonna bring it to the location where it's gonna go in the ranch. We're gonna set it down, put the frame in, and then start getting the barrier fence put together. And then just step by step, Keep following along, give this video a thumbs up if you guys are seeing anything that you can maybe use at your ranch, at your house, at your pet store. I don't know, but uh, let's do it, let's keep going. Future plans, this backside is gonna be storage and an area for generators and filter systems for the large ponds that will be inside of the building. But that won't be until about a year or so. So this side is completely empty. So I'm gonna use this area as a opportunity, I don't know. I don't know, something. Start the pond right here. I'm building the pond right here in this section and they're gonna have a whole run area all over here. So we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna put the whole pond right here and you're gonna see the whole process in just a few seconds and yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so we're gonna add everything in this wheelbarrow. This wheelbarrow right here is literally the lifesaver of the ranch. We use so much of this thing here. We're gonna put all the landscaping logs, everything in here and also we have a compressor with a staple gun right here and this is going to be used to staple the mesh to the landscaping logs so that's the perimeter fencing and this also will be used most likely to staple the pool liner into the frame of the wood that we're using for the pond you can just add that all there we load everything up and do this, this thing will hold 1400 pounds supposedly and it does i mean this thing uses this thing goes puts work at the ranch we do this thing all the time it's insane but uh let's keep going all right, so we just added all the last pieces of wood that we're gonna use for the enclosure. Bring it all over there. And uh, you got the you got the ruler? It's not the ruler, it's a level. It's a level. <laughs> I was gonna say that, I was seeing if he was right or wrong, if he knew what he was talking about. Yeah, bring the screws and uh, drills and let's get going, girls. The person who showed me this idea for the pool pond, make sure you follow him right now on Instagram. Ready, ready, ready? Birds and exotics of the world, right here. Follow him, he's the one that has showed me many different styles and been through the animal game for a long time and has showed me a lot of cool, awesome techniques. And this is one of his techniques that I learned from him and now I'm doing it, so let's do it. Oh, what happened? Well, two dummies behind you guys. Uh, we're no, watching the wheelbarrow. you hit a little hole and tip. 
Oh, hey, up. we're building the pond here. <laughs> no, you're over there. Oh, lordy lord. All right, we'll do it Always again. Always an adventure here. So now we got to lift everything over there. Yeah. Yo, emus, get to work. They don't, they don't, they don't care. All right, put the things over there. God. <laughs> Evening times, emus like to play. So they're probably coming around the corner. Oh. Oh. Oh, there they go. Yo. You can watch the buggy barrel this time? Yeah, I got you. Alright, cool. I'll make sure it doesn't Alright, cool. Oh! Oh, there we go. Coming we in hot. A, we got an emu race. Oh! Blonde's going for the win! Oh, there we go. Oh! Oh, we got a collision. Oh! They ran into each other? They ran right into each other. Oh! Look at these things. Oh! My goodness, they're just they're everywhere. They get excited in evening times. Alright, come on now. Isha! Came back to the garage. We got the staple gun, compressor, scissors, wire cutters, and uh, put this thing, bad boy, keep on putting it together. Oh yeah, you got the big wire cutter. So we're cutting off the whole rubber part and we're just gonna keep the inner part of this pond, take all of it out, bring it over there, dump that old dirty water out, because the geese actually have been using it. But uh, this is not a pretty sight just leaving here. I'm just gonna throw it away. But uh, now actually we're gonna reuse it, so it works out good. Cycle, cycle. So if you didn't understand what I was just saying, I probably didn't understand myself either. We took off the whole bubble part that we didn't need. Take all that part off. All this is garbage. Let's unscrew everything here. And then let's take this over there, put it inside the new pond, screw it all together, and call it a day. My line. We just started on this enclosure. We gotta keep on going. Oh, the compressor works. Let me turn it off. Let's grab this. I was thinking about digging it into the ground, but now that I think about it, this is deep enough. These alligators are only about this thick and width from sitting all the way on the bottom of the water. So that's completely deep enough. They're gonna be able to go onto their tail and back legs and be sitting up out of the water without a problem because we're gonna fill it to the tip, so it's gonna be fine. Let's grab this, fold it out a little bit, Damien. And let's see where the better parts are because these holes, we're not gonna use these holes part. We're gonna cut all that out. Perfect. And you know what you do first? Fill it up with water. Staple it and cut it. You want to do it like that, maybe? Yeah, because so when you just fill it with it water, it fits perfect. Yeah, you're right. And then once you staple it down, everything's secure. Cut it like that. Look at that. See what we do here? We work as a team, you guys. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna. I think right there is pretty much good. Yeah. Yeah. So I should grab the hose, start filling it up, start organizing everything else. While that fills up, yeah. it'll fit in all the holes, all the crevices, and it will staple it in because that's gonna be the volume of all the water that's sitting there. Perfect. So let's do that. Good job, Dylan. Thank you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my socks off and everything, go inside real quick, mm -hmm. and see if I feel any rocks underneath yeah. there, just in case. So, um, yeah. All right, see, so right there, I already got a, oh, I got a nice one right there already. So let me just pick this up. Look at that. Piece of metal. Yeah, the thing is, this whole section of the barn was the last part of from the last building, and there was a lot of nails and things around here that are just so embedded into the ground which would be the only problem. All right, so we're gonna use those smaller posts that we were saying, and I'm gonna dig a little indent about four to five inches so it stays in place, line them all around when they need to go, and start stapling all the mesh to the post. And then, yeah, there you go. We're gonna leave one section, a little opening, so that's a spot to get in and out, and I'll eventually just put a door there as well. So we're filling up this pond up with water. We're gonna have the extra pieces of two by fours that we used already, that was just extra pieces. We're using everything as extra pieces going right there, going there, going there, going there to help support the pond so it doesn't get dragged out or things of that sort. And we're also going to cut down all this extra pieces out and we're going to let it lip over and we're going to staple all around the sides so it doesn't bend in and out and the gators obviously don't go underneath the pond. But uh, this thing is filling up. We're going to screw a little bit more in and then we're going to start cutting this bad boy up. We should probably staple it before we even cut it just so it's a nice clean cut. Good idea. We should do that. So let's do that too. But uh, let's put this bad boy here. Staple that whole thing. It's a lot of water that's inside of there. We're able to see the gators real, real good. Add some water lettuce in there without a problem. A couple more staples probably around the side. We're adding all the extra, we're literally using everything. All the extra landscaping posts, we left a gap over here that fits perfectly for all the landscaping posts. So early mornings when the sun's here, they can come over here on the banks 
on the side and they can just bask right there, jump back in the water if they want to. And if they want to feel the dirt, the grass, and the sand, they can jump over here. I'll make a ramp on this side as well. And where Dylan's at right there will be a whole land section for them as well. Let's cut this whole uh, pool pond off and uh, keep going. Damien just cut all the leftover plastic out. So this is really don't need. But to be honest, now that I think about it, who knows if we need to patch something, we have the chemicals and things to patch this thing up without a problem. So that is done. We have this whole thing stapled in our eddy. Um, we're gonna staple a little bit more so that just so it's all the way nice and flushed to there without a problem. But look how much water is already in here. We already have eh, seven inches, eight inches or so without a problem. That is great for these alligators. Um, as long as they can completely submerge out the water, they're good. And like I said, these guys are only two foot and we made it six by five feet long. So that is perfect. So now what we're gonna do is Dig a hole right about right here, attach this uh, landscaping log into the ground, and then staple all the mesh completely against this whole thing to come out, and completely against that side to come out. So the only ways that they can come out onto the grass is this way right here. So this whole section right here will be an area for them to come out. It's pretty much a homemade turtle water land tub. Just your homemade one. Pretty much what I'm doing here. Pretty much the same exact setup, but um, DIY version. And yeah, pretty cool. Keep going. But we got this whole section done right here. We put the mesh feet up against the pond so that the gators have nowhere to hide inside of there. They have the whole basking area in the back. We'll fill in all the crevices with the river rocks that we have. We're gonna come out to about two and a half feet this way and the same thing over there. And then all this is gonna get bent inwards so that if they try to climb up, like I said earlier, they can't, they're not going to climb out and around, most likely not. And if they do, they're freaking, what's those animals called? They're, they're devils? No. We just stapled the top of these left staping posts so it's bent in. It's probably around mm, 10 inches, 12 inches out. So when the crocodilians try to come up, there's really no way that they're going to come this way. If they do, like I said, that's just insane. But uh, what we're doing now is we're bringing the post all the way to right here to this point, bringing another point post all the way to this point so right here will be my entryway so I can add a door right here open it and come inside without a palm and I can do whatever I got to do but because the sun is going down very soon we have all this mulch and all those rocks we're getting that done over there he's digging those holes and we're just working fast we want to get this video done we want to get these animals in here today hopefully so I'm going to start taking all that mulch out and laying it all right here in the grass because I don't want to weed whack and do all that stuff a little bit to see the animals real well so I'm going to start laying that mulch out and then um, we're going to cut this mesh right here we're moving, we're working, we're getting this thing done. You good, buddy? All right, you guys, so we got this going. We got pretty much all the mesh going. I'm gonna have to get a door going. A bunch of more things have to get done. But unfortunately, I still don't have electricity on this side of the building yet, so it's getting dark. I'm gonna finish the rest of this in the morning, so I will see you guys in the morning. See you guys then. All right, you guys, next day, and water's still in there, so that's a plus one. We are pretty much almost done because yesterday we were almost done. We just added some bricks here because there's gonna be all mulch inside of here. We're gonna add rocks just so they have a little bit more to jump into the water without a doubt. These guys get pretty much sea water from really long distances and they'll jump in and out once they figure it out very, very quickly. I've seen it happen when I used to work at the alligator place before. Sister's working over here cutting some mesh. She wants to come out and help. So put her to work. Um, yeah, so we're pretty much done. We, what we did here as well is if these alligators try to climb up, they're just gonna bump their heads. There's no way for them to come out at all. So all the barriers all on the sides, there's no way for them to come out. If they come over here and they just jump, just jump like that. If they get to this height, then we're gonna switch things around. But I have cameras all around the yard and I can figure things out without a doubt. So we're gonna start mulching right now. We're gonna grab that bag of mulch. I'm gonna lay it right over those bricks so those bricks are not gonna be shown at all. It's just gonna look like a bump in the ground. So it's gonna be pretty cool. So let's do this. I'm gonna add most of the mulch up against here so it's like a ramp, like I just said. So just like that. So we just put one bag of mulch right there. We have five bags. So we're gonna put all around the back ends first and then all around the mesh as well. Once those alligators start walking around and stuff, it's gonna patten down the mulch a little bit and it'll compress it with the mesh and the mesh won't go anywhere and then they won't be able to come out. Alligators really don't dig it out unless it's really breeding season or if they're trying to wallow to find water. They have a big enough pond there, they're always gonna have water. So they don't need to wallow at all. So that's perfect. And they're still young, so they're not worrying about territory. They're not worrying about 
breeding. They're not worrying about any of that stuff right now. They're just worrying about surviving and not getting eaten by any predators. Don't get your fingers. I'm not. All right, do more. Okay, I already did that. We're on our third bag of mulch and we have another airplane coming in and we have a beautiful storm coming as well. Hooray. Um, let's keep on going. Let's add more mulch, a little bit more. It's looking great with a little bit of blue right there. It's like a nice little thing. I mean, the fencing is not like, oh my God, beautiful at all. It's definitely not zoo quality, but for somebody that can't do something of very, very high quality, this is definitely the way to go, I would say, especially for turtles. You make it more dirt and more things, you make it a higher air. This could be a whole aquatic area without a doubt. You can put logs and things in here. I get add logs. I'm gonna put so many more things in here for these crocodilians and they're gonna think they're in the Everglades. The only difference is, is they have a blue bottom, but I mean, you get a green tarp, you get a brown tarp, whatever you want, but then they're gonna camouflage so well, you're never gonna see them. But um, let's keep on going. We're gonna add rocks in the back to make a little pop a little bit more. Two more bags of mulch, just keep on going. So we're gonna add a bag of rocks into the back section over there so that it's all nice and even and high. The last bag of mulch, we're gonna put it right in the middle so it's a nice high point. And I'm gonna get a piece of plywood, well, a six by six. Wow, that storm is coming in fast. Hopefully we can get this done. Screw it into the bottom right here and then we're gonna probably get one hinge with a door with a plywood right there and there. It'd probably be a flat piece of wood. That'll be my door right there. And I think we're ready to go. So uh, let's add a little bit of more mulch. Keep going. So they have that whole land area over there, and most likely when the sun's here in the morning, they'll just jump up here and they can go right here and they can bask all against the side without any problems. So it's pretty decent right there. Oh, almost lost the whole thing in there. You should just maybe even fill the whole thing up in the back with the rock. That'd be pretty cool. It's just the problem is when they jump in and out, they might put a lot of rock in there, but we'll see what happens. What I decided we had, literally we're using every single extra piece that I purchased for this so we can put it all together. So all the extra landscaping posts we're putting around the sides just for extra protection so that if they try to push, they can't get out. I know that they can't dig out, but if they wanted to push a little bit, we're gonna um, rebar that up against the sides. Won't have any problems with that. I added a big piece of uh, 12 by 12 on top of there. So they have a big basking area as well. They can jump on and off without a problem. Added the last five pieces of mulch. I'm putting this here in the front as a step over in and out. So I never have to really worry about if I go in there and they climb, if they climb out and they run really, because I learned at my old job, if we didn't close the door fast enough, they'll try to run out quickly. So this is a barrier right here. So they won't be able to run out. And I'll have another door right here so that I can open and close so no birds jump in. But um, other than that, it's pretty much just about done. I get, I'm going to add water lettuce inside of there as well, so have more coverage and more stuff for them to hide. We have one more bag of rocks, we'll probably put it right here in the front, just to make it look a little more pretty. I got a drill right here, I'm gonna screw this in, and um, we're just about done. All these little pieces of metal that's hanging off, that's just what I had to use with the extra pieces of metal. I'm just doing that so if they climb up, they hit the top and they just fall back down, they won't have to climb out, you know what I mean? So yeah, we're gonna test it out. I don't think I'll have any issues. I've dealt with the gators for a little while before and working at my old facility I saw how they really act a lot and uh, yeah look at the Gucci gang but, uh, back in real quick. all right so we got to this point you guys I hope you guys enjoyed today's video give this video a thumbs up you guys put those post notifications on because the next video we are moving <laughs> we're moving these crocodilians inside of here Damien get a freaking awesome idea we're gonna put plants all around the sides to make this thing boom and like I said at the beginning of this video this is gonna be for crocodilians, but you could do this at your house for turtles, aquatic turtles, and it'd be a prime little aquatic turtle pond. It's pretty much a waterland tub, but a homemade one, and it was less than $200 to build this whole entire thing. So it's a very easy DIY build that you could do in your own backyard as well. But uh, stay tuned, put the post notification on you guys. The door has to go, plants have to go around, and the crocodilians have to go in, and I will see you guys later. Peace out, everybody.